it's 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 just not lying right the other side's nice it lies right it's you can see it's nice and flat flatter when i press it because i haven't pressed that yet but oh. so i'm gonna have to go back in and just take Hello fashion sewers, I hope you are well. If you are new to my channel, I'm Colleen Geely. I'm here to inspire, motivate, and share ideas for refashioning clothing. And if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing. Towards the end of the video, I give more advice and tips, and do check out the description for sewing techniques that are on my channel that will aid you in your project. Let's get started. So this is what we're going to turn into a corset belt. This is mini skirt. Um, yes. The thing I'm going to struggle with here, I I believe, will be the tie that I want to achieve with it because the front of it is what's going to be part of the corset belt, and the back, as you can see, there isn't much length in the back in order to create this wrap around kind of tie. So. And I'm not going to add anything to this project, any of the fabrics. So we're going to make the most of what we can from the back of the skirt, as far as ties are concerned. So let's get started. For this project, you're going to need some interfacing. It has to be kind of the heavy duty one, pretty, pretty sturdy and firm. That's what you're going to need. So the first thing we need to do is to separate the front from the back. And it has a lining in here, which is which is good. That's, a, that's definitely a plus, it has a lining. I'm going to have to shorten this. And I'm gonna shorten it from the top, I would think. Yeah, I think the top would be like that. I think that will be the right length for me. Yeah, I think that would work. So let's separate the front from the back to begin with. The skirt is now separated. This is the back, which we'll put to one side, and this is the front. We'll focus on the front. And that's what the back of it looks like. Kept the lining. And also the face. So what I want to do now is to shorten it because it is a little too long. So I want to keep the borders. So I'm not going to shorten it that way because I'll just have a line of seam running through it. So the best way would be to do it from this border here. Yeah, I think that's ideal. And I'm actually going to sew through this really slowly because I don't want to break my needle and I don't want to sew into any of the bigger beads. So that's a good, yeah, I think that's a good alignment. So I'll put some pins in. Yeah, that's okay, that's a nice. And then just test it on myself to make sure I'm happy with the way it's going. Yeah, that's okay. So what I'm going to do... If you're working with similar fabric, which has got bead and sequins on it, this is a good tip that, because I can feel where the bigger beads are, that it's going to be easier for me to not sew into them. So, and it's just a case of just going slowly. Put my machine setting on slow and just take my time as I go. And also the pin, the placement of the pins, this helps. So I've sewn it in place. That's fine. It was really easy, just sewed really slowly. Haven't got a broken needle and that's key. So that's brilliant. So we've got all this bulk of a seam here and um, that we need to cut away. Press the seam open. So that's what it looks like now. Still got my line attached for now. And then clip it back over 
And what I'm going to do is get my interfacing, and that's going to cover it. Yeah, I'll just turn it that way. So, so I'm just going to cut around this. I've pressed the interface into place and I've put an extra strip at the top and also at the bottom just to give it a bit more sturdiness. So, and I had a bit left over, so that's what I decided to do. Let's get the back and put that to one side for one moment. And let's get the back. Right, so I don't really have that much to work with. But, um, so this is where my timer of thinking comes into play. Um, it's quite a nice curve here, and I want to keep some of the lining. I need a couple of strips in order to make a tie at the front. I've only got that much to play with, there isn't a lot. Let's see if I can do this without adding a ribbon. Um, so I'm going to release the seam here, take out the zip. I've removed the zip. The back is in two pieces, keeping a lining, got the facing, brilliant. Um, so it's going to be a case of turning them this way the ties will be coming from this section here. So I need to cut off about that amount of each side and I'll be should be able yeah I will be able to get some straps out of it. Perhaps not as long as as what I would want it to be, but I've got to work with what I have. It is a refashion project after all, isn't it? Um but it's 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 proven to be okay. Yeah so the next step now then is to cut the, okay, this is the marker where I'm going to cut and this section here is what's going to make my straps. So I put the back right side to right side and then it's just ready for me to cut. Remember you can always measure and mark. what's going to make my straps and this section is what I'm going to attach to the front. Let's see how I can get as much out of this as possible. Right so the best thing to do is to actually get a seam ripper. So I release the stitching from the hemline it's just a case of then folding it in half, like so. And then just cutting get my scissors in the middle there and cut. You can pin this. Um, yeah. That's where I left with. But I'll be able to extend it because of this section, the bit that I cut away. So it will make it longer, which is great. So I want to make sure that I'm using this, in which is so this onto. So it means I can cut this in half and I'll have longer straps in which to play with, which is excellent. So I just cut that in half, like so. Get that bit and get a pin and then sew it to this section here. Excellent. It's a bit, it's a bit of a curve so I need to make sure that's straight. And I've joined all three sections together, one, two and three, fold in half and then it's a case of just putting some pins in in order to keep them together, 
on there and there now I'm actually going to take this to a sewing machine and only sew along this line here and stop when I get to here because this will be too much to be pulled through to the right side so I'm going to sew the beaded section by hand okay as you can see I haven't sewn this section I've sewn along here and along the shorter edge and get my knitting needle just use um, a tool that will help you to pull it through to the right side make a little well in which to put the needle into and then just gently push that through there we go just gently tease that through So what I need to do then is to get the top part here and I'm just going to release the stitching because every millimetre matters so that because you could cut this if you wanted to as well. There we go. So that's my seam allowance. I'll fit into the Now I need to just press along the seam and get it all nice and flat. It's now pressed. Sewn and pressed. Now for this section here, it's just a case of really just tucking in the raw edges like so and putting a pin in and just keep them going until you get to the bottom. And then once you've pinned, it will be a case of base stitching and then to hold it permanently in place it will be using a hand sewing technique called a slip stitch. This end is now based and ready for hand sewing. So we need to insert this into the back here, like so. I'm just going to gently insert my seam ripper inside and just cut away at those stitches. This is the understitching. Just want to create a small open, just tease it open, like so. the strap and just insert it into it like so and it comes through this end here this is inserted now and there it is just pull it back just a bit more because I want it to be as long as possible take it to my sewing machine and just do a straight stitch down. We need to cut away the lining. Lining here and also on the other side. So let's do that first. Okay. We piece it to the other side. I'll just get the front. We need to cut the lining down on the front. Just get some pins to make sure I don't cut it too short. It's biting a little bit and that's because I put the facing, the interfacing in there. 
make sure it's flat like so and then just flip it over make sure yep I'm happy with that and then I'm going to cut along then I'm going to cut along here to do now then is so this into the seam so I know I'm not going to come all the way up here and that's fine so I've sewn both of the side seams on this side I've left an opening so that the strap can be fed through like so and I've also sewn the top part of the facing as well. So all that is left now to do is to turn this out to the right side. And let's have a look on the inside. So you can see there's a little bit of a step up from the back, but that's just the style of the skirt. So I made sure that I got the hem here, but it meant that this section would be left, which is nice actually. I've, I have um, fitted it to see if it's okay. So what is left now is to sew the lining. So I'm going to take it to the sewing machine again, and I'm going to turn this and sew the side seam of the lining. It's just a straight stitch straight down on both sides, and then. I've sewn down the side seam of the lining, left an opening in this one to match with the opening here. And as you can see, it looks really nice and flat, so that's excellent. And we've still got, so the join there is good. So this is the last stage, almost there. I sewed the bottom of the belts I sewed from, so the, from the side here across the bottom of the back just to the side seam and repeated it on the other side so all that is required now is just to pull it through to the right side So what's going to be required of me now is then is just to sew this by hand using a slip stitch and then it will be all complete. So I've just got hand sewing to do and then I'll try it on and show you. Before I do the hand sewing to complete the look of this bell. I just want to do a last try on and I am happy with it but there is an issue here. It's 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 just not lying right. The other side's nice. It lies right. It's, you can see it's nice and flat. It'll be flatter when I press it because I haven't pressed that yet. But oh. So I'm going to have to go back in and just taking that just a little bit more so it lies a little bit more flat so it looks like that side but other than that I am happy the way this has turned out I do like this the um, for the limited amount of fabric I had to work with with the skirt I think it has worked um, I do like this section here um, but I do feel as though it could probably do it a bit of elastic perhaps just to kind of maybe keep it in place I don't know um, it's, I'll have to wear it um, before I can make that judgment but it's okay it's nice what's even nicer is the back when I put 
put it on and I love this. I love what's happening with the back. I'm an asymmetrical girl and I do love asymmetrical garments, but I love this and this has given me an idea for a design that I will definitely be using this. But it could be a case of if I didn't like it that way, I would have to put um, press studs or hooks here and here to keep it in place. But no, I am going to be wearing it like that. That is nice. And the ties, yep, I'm happy with that. Good results. Yes, I'm happy. So I just need to do one bit of machine sewing and then hand sewing to hem the bottom to the lining. I made the necessary um, adjustment to the side, which was just taking it in just a few millimetres in order to get this to stay still, which was here. And I've hand sewn this section into place now. So the lining was a plus because now it looks nice and neat and professional. I enjoyed that project. It was a little bit more challenging than I actually initially thought. Um, it was mainly the belt and because I had to put so many sections in order to make it as long as possible. But I used all of the skirt, which is good, including the part that I actually cut away. I um, wasn't sure I was gonna use that, but um, yeah, I did. You don't have to, if you don't wish to use all of your project, if you wanted to get ribbon um, or different fabric, um, on the projects that you may have fabric left over from and you could have made the ties out of that I just want to make sure that I'm showing you what the possibilities that can happen when you actually use the whole of a garment in order to transform it into something else uh, the side seams um, they were they were tricky but I think the hand sewing was the key to this project and that is basically because of the beads now, if you are working with a similar fabric where there is lots of beads and sequins, then do remember to sew slowly, just sew slowly. Increase sti your stitch length a little bit will help, but just make sure you are sewing slowly because you don't want your beads to break your needle or you don't want them to fly them all over the place or in your eye. Um, so do be careful if you're using that type of fabric. The um, next thing would be the shape. Yeah, the shape. I'm straight up and down, and this was a skirt that was really um, up and down, straight up and down. If you have a pear shape, then maybe go for an A-line style of skirt in order to make sure that it gets to those areas that you want it to cover so that it has that effect. And yeah, those are the tips and advice that I would actually share with you. So if you enjoy this video, then please give it a thumbs up and please do share it with your friends on your different social medias. And if you have any comments or queries, then put those in the comment box below. And I will see you next time.